It's your boy Superman 2000. I'm back in the fight here. This time I'm breaking the money down. I'm breaking. I'm breaking the money down. Break. I'm just. So Conor McGregor said that they'd have to come at him correct, and they'd have to give him a stake in the company. No, just reading a comment that um, Cannabis Heels made, where he said, "Hey, listen, man, if they give uh, Conor McGregor an equity stick, they probably have to pay him money, and you have to pay it back." So I was like, you know. That's a good idea. Let's see if he, Conor McGregor, would be able to afford a piece of the pie or if they would even consider giving him a piece of the pie. So what I did was I went back and I looked at the numbers. Basically, the first valuation of the UFC before the deal went through, the parent company, the debt load that's been brought over from the acquisition, and the new monthly or payments and the interest that has to be paid from the deal being financed. All right, so here we go. So first of all, let's back up. Now, I'm give, I'll give some background on this because the UFC makes what, 600 million a year. That's fine, all right? That's the gross revenue. But earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization, it's $180 million a year. Now, I know that sounds nerdy, but if you make, 600 million and before interest tax depreciation and amortization yeah you, you, you clear in you know, 180 million that tells me that, that hey listen there's a heavy cost there, there's lots of cost to this company and in terms of the promotion how much you pay your fighters the back end your debt load and other things that you're financing to get the goods in other words uh, if I'm selling ice cream, all the costs that go into me selling that ice cream and getting it where it's supposed to be has to be very high. And then what's left over is administrative costs. So basically, if I'm selling ice cream and I say, okay, I have to buy the milk, I got to buy the eggs, I got to, what else, get the machines and the stuff running, all those things I need to make the ice cream work, I absolutely need but if there's anything else that I don't need to make the ice cream work, that's gonna be considered my, what's that? A selling and administrative expenses, right? So pretty much the venues, the pay-per-views, the deals and the things that they're negotiating are very, 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 very crazily expensive, all right? So basically what you have here is the UFC Making a profit, but making a very, very low profit and growing at a steady pace. Now along comes W-E, W-M-E-I-M-G. I have no idea what that stands for, but hey, we'll keep rolling with it. So in the last 26 months, they've purchased Miss America from Donald Trump, the Professional Bull Riders Association, and they also made a bid to purchase Formula One racing. Okay, now you're saying to yourself, why is this relevant? Well, it's relevant to me when somebody comes in the market and they have $3.8 billion in debt and then they start trying to buy everything. Okay, it's relevant to me because if, if you have a heavy debt load and you're trying to buy up everything, it's like, I'll give you an example. It's like this, uh, it's a Star Wars example actually. It's like you're a dying, aging Sith Lord and you find lots of good, healthy young apprentices and their healthy, strong, vibrant, hateful minds compensate for your weak, uh, stagnant, not growing, not thinking, lack of power. So basically, all the healthy companies that you purchase go ahead and make up for the deficiency. So when you, their income is consolidated to your low income, it brings you up. Not only does it brings up what you make by, 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 by small digits. Let's say I was making $5, but I purchased another company for $20. That company that I purchased gives me $3 a year. Okay? So if I'm making $5 a year, that $3 a year tacked onto my now, now I got $8 a year. And if I if it was if, if the money that I that I'm getting, I'm financing it financing the money I got really cheap, 
I have enough to make the payments, even though my debt load is very heavy. And I'm going to see my cash flow and my income keep tipping up. At some point, I can refinance that debt even lower and use my cash reserves to buy more companies. So WMEG, their whole model is to grow, scale fast, and grow through acquisition. I mean, that works in telecommunications. If you're small and you want a footprint in a new area, and like there's a Cox Cable or a Verizon, they'll buy another small telecommunications company. They'll have that customer list. They'll move in and put their infrastructure in and boom, get a footprint in the market and then start making the competitive mode where a lot of the customers will. That's what a lot of the customers in. So that's what WMEIG is doing. So fine. I'm, I'm all, I understand that. I'm, all, I'm, I'm done with that. So I made some notes, and here's where my area of con here's where I have the concerns. Okay, so to buy the UFC, they borrowed 1.8 billion in debt, right? And the them borrowing they borrowed 1.8 billion in debt to finance the the deal. But previously, they borrowed 2.1 billion to purchase. The other part of the name, IMG. They were just WME first, and then they purchased IMG. Currently now, they're $2.5 billion in debt. Then they borrowed the additional $1.8 billion to buy the UFC. That's $4.35 billion in debt, roughly $4.4 billion in debt. So, you say to yourself, well, what does that mean in the grand scheme of things? Well, in the grand scheme of things, if they are, if they were to issue bonds, right? Instead of the one I issue bonds to cover the cost of debt. So basically, they say, hey, I'm going to sell you something similar to a promissory note. This is it for this amount. And you get these monthly interest payments. A part of the payment is going to go towards the principal that I borrow from you. And the other part is going to go towards the interest. It's just making it simple for the non-financing people. Just simple talk. I'm, I got I to make this thing as simple as possible. Most people find this boring, but I'm like, ah, I'm a nerd. So I get super excited. So here's the problem now. When you go to issue a bond, you get a bond rating, right? So their bond rating, it's a B2. It means that the bond is considered speculative and high risk. That's not good. That's not good. No, that's not good. I guess why that's not good. If you're if it's speculative and high risk, it simply means that hey, that's the market itself telling you red flag, be careful of this investment. The market, not just not weirdos, but the market. The market saying, hey, listen, it's a risky investment. So here I am thinking about it, and I'm saying, will Conor McGregor really get a piece of the pie? Would it really say, hey, here's some equity and that? The answer is still no. The answer is still no because what's happened is that they've purchased the UFC when it was eking out a little profit and just start turning around and tick up really good. And they've put themselves in a lot of debt, paid off five hundred million in debt that the UFC had, okay, and borrowed one point eight billion from Goldman Sachs in the form of two loans. One for one point four billion and one for four hundred and twenty five million. One loan over seven years and one loan over eight years. The interest payment on that loan is a hundred and seventeen million. Now earlier I said that the UFC makes one hundred and eighty million bef you know, earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization, right? We call it EBITDA just to keep things going. That's a term that we financial blah 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 people use. So think about this. 117 million a year for the next 17 years is what that loan is going to cost. UFC only makes 180 80 million a year. That's 63 million they'll wind up with after that loan payment comes out. So you think about this. That's the that 63 million is left to cover all the other costs, right? After all the good cost of goods sold and all that stuff comes out. Why in the world would they give Conor McGregor an uh, equity stick when they're in debt? They bought a brand that's just started to make some money and they put that brand in a position where it's going to be even making less money 
and eking by just like almost it's 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 just squeaking by. Now why would somebody make an investment like that? They did it for the valuation. Okay? So first person that bought the UFC, I think they bought it for 40 grand. Then it was losing money. They sold it for for, for, for what? Two million. Now they sold it for two million. Now the Freta brothers, they come along now and they've scooped it up. They're they're now selling it for four something billion. So each time it, it it traded hands, it was losing money, but the potential for money was there. So these people are buying the UFC based on the potential for money, even though it's a risky investment, even though the trend is there that say, hey, listen, at some point it's gonna taper off. They believe that the valuation is there. So They've purchased other companies in the same arena. The bull riding, the Miss Universe, that type of stuff. to diversify and spread the risk out. So they fully expect to lose some money, but they're spreading the risk out. Now, why do I say that? Because if they expect to lose some money and they're spreading the risk out across these different investments, them buying the UFC simply means that, hey, we're going to have to make this work and we're going to have to cut costs. In my next video, I'm going to cover that. The kid just walking on the door, so let me cut out. All right, guys, peace out.